Hi everyone, Simona here from Vector Twist, and welcome to this Vector Twist Illustrator tutorial where we'll be creating a floating island with some trees, a river that runs through it, and 3D clouds. This is all in 3D, based on the isometric view, but without any isometric grid, just with the handy Adobe Illustrator 3D tools. You'll be learning some really cool Illustrator tricks on how to turn a simple shape into a rocky island, how to alter paths in such an easy way that this island will look like floating in the air, and how to create nifty isometric trees. This is really a fun tutorial to follow along with, and no matter what Illustrator knowledge you have, you won't get stuck, at least not on this island. Because learning Illustrator is easier than you think. Before we start with this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already, hit the notification bell so you'll never miss any of the Vector Twist tutorials, and with that said, let's jump into Illustrator and get started creating a floating 3D island. First we need to create the base for the island. Set a fill color, I chose base for mine, then select the rectangle tool and click once on the artboard. In the pop-up window, set 300 pixels for the width and the height. Then click OK. With the shape still selected, go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and choose Roughen. In the pop-up window for Roughen, make sure you select Absolute instead of Relative, set the size to 52 pixels, and for the detail, set 2. Click the preview to see if this is working for you, and then press OK. Since the Roughen effect is a live effect, we need to expand the appearance. So keep the shape selected, go back to Object, and select Expand Appearance. Before we continue with the next step, we need to create a copy. So make a copy of the shape and drag it to the side. So back to our base shape. We need to transform it into a 3D island. And since I'm a big fan of easy steps, I want to share with you how you can use the 3D tool in Adobe Illustrator to do so. Select the shape, go to Effect, 3D, and choose Extrude and Bevel. In the pop-up for the position, we're going to choose Isometric Top, and for the Extrude Depth, we're going to set 200 points. Click the preview to see if the extrude depth is long enough, and make sure that the surface is set to plastic shading. Then press OK. We need to expand it again since it's a live effect, so keep it selected, back to Object, and Expand Appearance. Now we have a 3D base for the floating island. Next, we'll scale the bottom part of our base shape. So select the lasso tool in the toolbar, and select all of the anchor points on the bottom of the shape. Once they're all selected, Go to the toolbar and double click the scale tool. In the pop up window, we want to set the scale to uniform, make sure preview is checked, and then we're going to decrease the percentage. I'm simply highlighting the number, and then with my arrow key down on the keyboard, I'm going to decrease it. And as you can see on the artboard, we are scaling down our shape. Once we like it, we'll press OK. Make sure you keep the point still selected. And then again with the arrow key on the keyboard, push it downwards. This will stretch the shape and now we have the base of our floating island. Next we'll create the grass for the island. Grab the copy of the base shape and fill it with a green. Then go back to Effect, 3D and choose again Extrude and Bevel. Set the position back to Isometric Top and for the Extrude Depth set 50 points. Click the Preview and then press OK. Of course we need to expand it again, so back to Object, Expand Appearance. Then we go back and grab the lasso tool and select the anchor points of the bottom of the shapes, just like how we did it with the base shape for the island. Then we'll double click the scale tool again, make sure the preview is clicked, and in uniform we'll decrease the percentage. Just a little bit, not too much. Just enough so it fits on top of our island. Then press OK. Now we can move the grass on top of our island. If it looks too small, simply with the free transform tool, increase the size a tad. Just enough so it sticks out of our floating island. I think the island needs a river, don't you think? Let me show you how you can create that. First, set the stroke to blue and the fill to none. Then grab the pen tool and create a straight line on the artboard. Set the stroke to about 12 points in width. Then go to Effect, choose Distort and Transform, and all the way on the bottom choose zigzag. Now in the pop-up make sure that you set it to absolute, set the size to 14 and the ridges to 2. Click the preview and make sure that you select for the points smooth instead of corner. Then press OK. Keep it selected, go back to effect, 3D 
and choose Extrude and Bevel. Here in the position choose again Isometric Top and this time for Extrude and Depth we are going to set it to 0 points. Press the Preview and then press OK. Now when you move the line on top of your isometric floating island, you can see that we've created a river. If you find the river too small, simply increase the stroke size. Since the 3D tools are life effects, it will automatically adjust to it. We need to create now a copy of the river. Don't expand the appearance, because we need to create a copy and create the side part of the river, just as if it would be falling off from the grass. So create a copy and drag it to the side. Open up the Appearance panel and in the Appearance panel double click not the zigzag but the 3D extrude and bevel effect. We'll make sure we press Preview and this time we're going to set about 20 points for the extrude and depth. Just toggle on and off the Preview to see what it looks like and then press OK. Since we have a stroke of 24 now we want to set it back down to one point and change of course the color into a darker green. Now we can expand our shapes. So back to Object, Expand Appearance and select the river and do the same. Object, Expand Appearance. Then grab the river bank and move it onto the side of your river. And then place them wherever you want on your floating island. Since our river and riverbed is sticking out on top of our grassland on top of the floating island, I'm simply going to clip it. So all I'm going to do is select the top shape, create a copy to the front Select both my river and the river bed and then apply a clipping mask. The island needs some trees now and since the 3D tools work so well, let's continue to use them for the trees as well. Simply create a square with the rectangle tool on the artboard, then go back to Effect, 3D and choose again Extrude and Bevel. This time for the position I'm going to choose Isometric Left and I click the Preview. Depending on the size of your square, you might have to play with the Extrude depth a little bit. So either decrease it or increase it until you have a cube on your artboard. Then press OK. After that we are going to Object, Expand Appearance. Then I am going to choose the lasso tool again and I will select all of the anchor points of my top cube. I am going to Object, Path and I will choose Average. In the pop-up window make sure you select both and then click OK. Do not deselect anything. Simply now with the arrow key upwards on the keyboard, increase the points that you've just selected. And now you have a starting point for the tree. This is the base shape and then you can create simply copies of it, change the size, increase it, decrease it and even change the angle. And this is how I build up my trees. Here is a finished tree that I've created in the way that I've just explained to you. And then I just create multiple copies and place it on my floating island. I also want to simply just tell you quickly how I created a rock formation. But I'm not going to go into details because it is based on the way we created the base shape for our floating island. I simply created a polygon shape and I added the 3D tools effect to it again. Here in my appearance panel I can show you how I applied it and then simply expanded it and then changed the colors and added some simple shapes to it. And here's my finished rock formation simply based on how we've created every other 3D shape here in Illustrator. Before we finish I want to show you one last tip, how to create a 3D cloud. Select a really light grey as the fill, then choose the ellipse tool from the toolbar and create three circles, one big, one medium and one small. Select all of the three shapes, open up the Pathfinder panel and choose Unite in the shape mode. Keep the shape selected and of course go back to Effect 3D and choose Extrude and Bevel again. This time for the position I am going to choose Isometric Right and I select the Preview and then decrease my Extrude Depth to probably about 20 points. I keep Surface Plastic Shading and then I press OK. If I find my cloud way too dark, I simply switch from a light grey to a white fill. And if that is still too dark, all I have to do is go back to Appearance, double click Extrude and Bevel Click on more options and then change my light. I can pull it out to the front a little bit to make it much lighter. And that's it. Then press OK. And now you've created a 3D cloud here in Illustrator. The rest is pretty much just building up more assets for the floating island. More trees. More rock formations. Maybe a tent. 
And since we created a river, we would also show how the river falls off the island. And I simply created this by just some straight shapes. It's not that complicated. I think you get the idea. And that's it. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you liked about this tutorial or what you didn't like. Also support me by giving this tutorial a like, hit the subscribe button too, and make sure you press this notification bell, so you'll be notified when the next Vector Twist tutorial is live. I'll see you next time.